Fires the triple. Oh, boom! Out to Cam. Let's it fly. Yes! He got it! He got it! Cam Johnson got it! All right, we're here at your spot, Flower Child. How did you develop this relationship with the restaurant? How did this thing get started? Everywhere you are, you kind of need a, a go-to food spot. And Flower Child, I had one um, near my house. There's somewhere that I like to go often, healthy option. Um, get your proteins, get you know, good nutritional value out of it. And my agents were like, what food spots have you been eating at a lot? And I was naming some, and I named Flower Child probably first. And they called them and made a deal with them. And here we are. So on a game day, do you have those superstitions where you're eating the same thing? To be honest, usually on game days, I like eat leftovers from the night before dinner. <laughs> Flower Child leftovers. It could be. It very well could be. My, my pre-game meal, like around 3 o'clock is when I usually eat on a 7 o'clock game. There's no, like, I got to eat this or I got to eat that. No, that's good. They're just, you know, random each Very, day. Yeah. yeah. Now, the one thing that catches me when I walk in is uh, seeing the lemonade stand. Yeah. And that takes me back. Yeah. That, that was crazy. That whole event with I all the fans being out there. I had no idea it was going to be that big. It was, what, uh, Monday maybe? Um, 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock was the scheduled time. I'm thinking people are at work. We only put it out Saturday, so not the word can't get out too crazy. So if I'm there for an hour, maybe I get 60, 70 people come, like one person per hour, you know, through the grapevine. People might hear of it, people might see it, whatever. But I'm pulling up about 2.20, 2.30, you know, think 30 minutes, get myself settled, get ready. And I get a phone call, I'm about five, 10 minutes away, and they're like, dude, people are backed up. There's like hundreds of people in line. It's backed up around the block already. Like, this is going to be crazy. And from then on, man, it was like there for probably a little over two hours, ran out of lemonade, sold completely out. And your teammates show up. And my teammates show up. And it was just like mayhem. It was absolute mayhem. Booker on the drive in the corner, Cam Johnson. Shazam! Three points from the corner. Throwing up. Who is your favorite shooter? I mean, everybody obviously looks at your shot. It is so pristine, so beautiful. Like, who is that? Ray Allen. Ray Allen. I, I can't say I shoot like him. Um, he has a jump shot that's very, really based off of um, jumping. He's very big on getting off the ground, legs, which every shooter is, but he has a pretty unique flick to his jump shot. Um, so it's not like I always try to emulate it, his shot form specifically, but definitely the shooter that I watched the most growing up. So who did you steal from? If you were watching other shooters too going, ooh. And I know your dad worked with you as well. Right. You're playing with your brother. So my shot form kind of developed on its own away from uh, probably NBA influence, mostly influenced by my parents and those, you know, driveway work sessions that we put in when I was little. But as I got older, it was definitely Clay that I watched the most in terms of footwork and his ability to get shots off um, in different ways. Late high school, early college, that's who I started really watching the most. So your dad, Gil, yeah. is working with you. Right. And there's a story that goes, you got to make three to 500 shots before you can come back inside. It yeah. That too. And also to warm up the one-handed shot. Because yeah. I, I just, you know, to perfect your shot, to that other hand, especially for young kids, that's critical, right? Yeah, it is. And it was just something that we did every day. Every day was always 54 makes in a row. So if you miss on 45, like, I don't know, you never know who was watching out the window, but you couldn't, you know, you couldn't cheat. <laughs> I'm sure dad was. Yeah. Mom. So we had to get 50 along with our other shots from around. We had different drills that we had. So one would be make three all net from three spots and five spots around the key. We had one where you shoot. Every shot you make, you took a step back until you missed two in a row. Um, and those little drills that we did basically every day were just like our, our shooting drills. 
Um, but that was kind of where I, I learned my form. My form growing up was basically identical to how it is now, but it was always a lot lower. So like I'd start from here and shoot. And my mom and my, my parents all together, yeah, come on in. Okay, broccoli mac and cheese. I says me. Oh, that's the Johnson and then special. I have a side of mac and cheese and the mother earth bowl of salmon. Oh, sweet. Anything else I can grab for you two today? Just utensils. Good. Utensils, perfect. My shot was low, and my parents were always like, you gotta shoot higher. Your release point has to be higher. Then they got to a point where they realized, like, well, as you get stronger, your release point will get high. But it was always a point of emphasis, it was higher release point, higher release point. But as I got stronger, it started to get higher and higher. Um, and that's basically the jump shot I have today. So there was no real changes in it since I was probably eight years old. Get that one long rebound in the hands of CP3 up ahead to Kim on the drive to the cup with a finish. The only time I will go back and watch, I won't, it's not even maybe, maybe that game will play into it, but it'll be more of like a, as like a broad spectrum of when I make shots, what exactly do I do? So I will, like, you have to throw away the misses, but you also have to kind of self-diagnose. But it's just the nature of being a shooter. You're gonna make some, you're gonna miss some, but when you, you get hot, you gotta ride those streets. When you get cold, you gotta, you know, focus in and, 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 and show a little extra, you know, I don't know, I guess a little extra focus on each individual shot, on the fundamentals, on the basics, on doing what you do. Out to Cam, lets it fly for the win. Yes! Cole game! How about the first time you sat down and actually watched it? I mean, could you truly enjoy what happened in that game? Because obviously in the moment, it's just hysteria yes. in the arena. So the first time you actually sat down and watched it, like. Yeah, so that game, I've had a handful of games like that in my career, not in the NBA. I have, that was the first time I really let those, like, let, I don't, I don't think maybe 12, 13 is the upper echelon of attempts I'll take in a game. But that one, I was really feeling it, right? And I remember there's maybe one or two shots where I, like, extra focus, like, extra attention to detail, make sure my, my hips sink, make sure my follow through is, you know, perfect, make sure everything mechanically is perfect. And you throw those in with a couple of the heat checks that, that go down, and it, it creates a good storm. Um, but that game, you know, I just felt the rhythm and, and rolled with it. Plain and simple. Rising up over quickly. Oh, don't do that. Bullseye! Don't do that to him, Cam. That's not fair. I don't want to interrupt. I mean, have you eaten yet today? So I don't I have. I don't want to, I don't want to be the guy that's like, uh, We're good. Like, come on. Kind of like, We're all right. Good. So you got, I think we got pretty much the same but, thing, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. All right, so this is the, if somebody comes here and asks for the Cam Johnson This is what power, they get. Is it the power meal? Yeah, I believe okay, so. Okay, and what's in there? Salmon, broccoli, and mac and cheese. Very simple. But I've had a lot of people that I know around the valley that are like, hey, man, you're power bull. That's my regular meal. Now you got me saying your name when I get my regular meal. So it's funny, but I think this is a go-to for a lot of people. See, I got the mac and cheese on the side. I love the mac and cheese. But I think I also have quinoa under there, so. See, I've never been a big quinoa guy. Okay. And there, but I've had, like, dried, crispy quinoa on a salad the other day. It was really good. I might go down that route. Dribble drive to the right side. Gives to Cam Johnson. Right corner three. Good again for Cam. That's the same spot. Swings it across, can't, lets it fly, and down it goes. So you got a ton of brothers, yes. right? You got an older brother. Yes. You have Puff at North Carolina. Yep. He's a junior now. Yep. You got Braylon, who's playing high school ball here at Pinnacle. Yep. So give me an update on those two guys. How are Puff and Braylon doing? They're doing well. They're doing well. Just getting ready for their respective seasons. Um, big ones for them. Braylon's starting to get into the, you know, being recruited realm a little bit. Oh, really? Uh, North Carolina in the mix already? No, not yet, not, not yet. yet. Some schools around be. here, some West Coast schools, GCU, schools like that. Um, and I think that would be a pretty cool spot for him. My older brother, too, he was pretty good. Oh, really? So how old now. is he? 30. He's 30. Did he play college ball there? Yeah, he played uh, at Clare University in Pennsylvania. But in terms of high school dominance, I think he has the rest of us because he was... Really? Wow. Yeah. He has our school's record for points, rebounds. He's a beast. What he happened? just didn't grow. Didn't grow. 
And you had like a huge growth. Yeah, so I was the opposite. So he grew early. Yeah. He only grew up inch max in high school, probably a half an inch. So from freshman year to senior year, I grew a foot. He came in like a 6'2", 185 pound, like fully developed, how I expected to go into high school. But then left like 6'2 and a half, you know, he got stronger over the years, but um, he was a 4'5", but he was physically very, very dominant as a high school player. How tall is he now? 6'2 and a half. So he's 6'2 and a half, that's where he capped out. Okay. But if he was taller, if he was my height, he would, he would be. I'm sure he league. reminds you of that. He would, st- he would be playing. Yeah. No, he doesn't. Oh, really? In fact, he will never say it, because he, he's not really the type to be like that. That's a good big brother. Well, yeah. that, that's typical of the Johnson family. But if, if he was my height, he would be still playing for a lot of money. Just in the way, Mavericks leading 12-11, not for long, because of Cameron Johnson. The new starter in the starting five for the Phoenix Suns. So this offseason, I mean, at some point, you had to have been told that, all right, the opportunity is going to present itself for you to be a starter. Yeah. How did that change your workout routine, your, just what's going through your head, the opportunity, nothing changed? You're shaking your head. Nope, you you just hit the weight room with Mikel and just started screaming and pumping, pumping iron. Yeah, so we had a lot of fun. I remember probably two days after the end of the last season, me and Mikhail looked at each other like, let's just lift the summer. Like, let's lift weights. And we did. And we had fun doing it. And those days in the weight room, uh, Corey, our strength coach, he, he would get after us. He, like, we, it reminded me of college. Like, the, just the peer duration of the lifts would be so long and with some type of crazy finisher at the end, make you not want to stand up for like an hour. Um, but it was fun, and I didn't really worry, focus too much on what the, I didn't even think about it at all, really, like, until I started talking to Coach Mon about it. Like, it wasn't on my mind, like, am I going to start anything? Am I going to come off the bench? Because it wasn't really on my mind the first couple of years. Um, I started that stretch in the bubble. I started on and off over the past couple of seasons. These are guys that I've played with for years now. In basketball, I think continuity is a huge thing. So if I was coming onto a team, starting in a new role, I think I'd have to think about it more. But because these are guys that I played with for three, four years, it doesn't feel foreign. It feels very natural. You didn't feel like you had to bulk up to play the four. It it was just a matter of just getting stronger. Playing the four, playing the three, whatever it may be. Um, I try not to lose too much of like speed and mobility. I try not to sacrifice that for strength, you know, by putting on too much weight. So I try to find the healthy weight ranges to stay in and then get as strong as I can in those weight ranges. With the ball's knocked away, the Suns battle for it, come up with it, and it's Cam Johnson behind the back dribble, go to the rim and score. Beyond the Court is presented by Open Door. Sell your home the new fashion way. Season I, 23 for Bridges, comes up with a steal. During the offseason, you went to Australia. Basketball without borders. Uh, Quite a flight, I'm sure, back and forth. But what was cool is you had Kobe White there, a teammate from North Carolina. Um, Also had Josh Green, who's from Australia, who's playing for the Dallas Mavericks. Um, You had some other NBA players. What was the best part of that trip? Coaching the kids was the best part. Uh, Well, first of all, Australia, where we were is Canberra. It's the capital. So it's like their version of Washington, D.C. It's one of their newer cities. It's a uh, like very, very majority government workers. So it's not the most exciting place. Jock said it was like literally the most unexciting place in Australia, but I enjoyed it. It was winter time when we went. The nature reserves are beautiful. Um, the zoo we went to was a lot of fun and it was just cool to explore somewhere different, somewhere new. But the coaching the kids was definitely the most fun part. Kids from all over the place. Asia, Australia, Oceania. Um, they were so attentive, so ready to learn. Like half my team didn't even speak English. Really? Half of them. And I'm like, you're finding ways to communicate with them. Like basketball has its own language, right? So I show them what to do. I tell them what I want. Sometimes I'd catch a blank stare with a nod and they're like, 
I don't really know what to say. But you just kind of keep trying to explain it and they get it. And they were playing really well, picking up on concepts and, and we won the championship, naturally. Ball runs a break, finds a wide open shooter in Cam Johnson. And he finds the bottom of the net. So we talked a little bit about your favorite shooter. Somebody maybe, you know, you may have tried to mimic a little bit as a kid, but if, at, growing up as a basketball fan, if you had Cam Johnson, you got the Cam Johnson power meal. If you had the Cam Johnson power five, starting lineup, your five favorite players growing up. My favorite players from when I was young? Yeah. Jordan was always number one. North Carolina. Always. Six. He's also pretty good. He was always number one, so, so here, cut above. Um, but if I'm constructing a team, am I doing it to construct a team based on what I think will win? or just Popularity, the five your own heart, like? from your heart. You don't even have to go by position. Five guys. I'm not creating a team here. I'll just give you five guys that I really liked growing up. I loved watching Rondo play as a kid. Really? Raja. I loved watching Rondo play, yes. Um, Probably the worst shooter of this starting five. Probably. But he could do but anything else. Yeah, yeah, no, five. I, I, I'm not, yeah, 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 not going to yeah, be yeah, like, yeah, yeah. why would you put such power such five. five? Cam's power five. So I'll just tell you people that I really liked watching. I liked watching Rondo as a kid. I really did. Um, he probably has the biggest hands. Yeah. Jordan was my favorite player growing up far and above. Always a big fan of watching Clay when I, especially as I really became like shooting as my thing. KD and his ability to do what he does at his size was always very, very intriguing to me. So I watched a lot of KD and I just loved his game, still do, still watch it. The things he does is ridiculous for his size. I'm gonna think of a big, a center that I liked, not because I wanted to play like him or anything, but Shaq. Just, here, physical dominance. It was fun to watch. Um, it was pretty cool. That's good. That's so pretty it's, it's good like five. a it's like a random five. Yeah, but Ron, just, Rondo's really the only outlier, I think. I like but again, Rondo but he was so much fun to watch too because yeah. he's such. A glue I like guy. those old Boston Celtics teams. 07, 08, 09, 10. They were a lot of fun to watch. Of that starting five, he's probably the guy that has the most space between himself and the defender. I mean. Defenses was just sagged down into the lane. Dare he was just and he'd still and he'd still dump. Comes down to Hayden, get it up to Booker. Late pass comes down to Cam Johnson. Take it in, score the hoop. You've shown some strength already in some of your dunks. Yeah. You've had three unbelievable dunks. So more than that, probably. But I'm gonna focus on. I three. think three P is P.J. Tucker. Cam Johnson, throw. Oh, he throws it down. Yeah. Javale McGee. Yeah. Cam Johnson inside. And Cam with the right hand hammer. And the reverse on Jared Allen. Yeah. Sends it out to Cam Johnson penetrating. And oh, first my. Cam time for Cam Johnson in traffic. Oh, my goodness. How do you rank those three? Ooh, I've been asking. I mean, PJ's got it just because it was in the finals, right? That's number one. Yeah. Okay. But between the JaVale and the. So PJ is number one. But I'll say that one was probably the, the easiest. <laughs> Sorry, PJ. Yeah. Well, he, he set a charge, so he didn't try to jump with me. And I had like 70 feet of runway to like get my feet right. Like I didn't have to like time up my steps or create speed to jump with. I was literally just running in a straight line until the basket. Yeah. And the other two guys are seven footers. Right, yeah. So JaVale, Jared Allen, let's see. I'm gonna have to say, I've had people tell me that the JaVale one was better, but I like the Jared Allen one more. It was sneaky. It was like the it sneaky. It was sneaky, but yeah. it was backwards. And I have, I've done that one before, just in practices. And practices, pick up whatever it may be. And I'm like, this is one that I can really pull out in a game. Because people don't really expect it. They maybe expect you to finish on the other side of the rim or try to get a little Euro crafty finish. They don't expect you to dunk it backwards. So when I had the opportunity, I was like, I, like I was struggling at that point in that game. I had missed a bunch of threes. It's overtime where we're like jumping on them. So I'm like, let me just like pile on, catch this little <laughs> momentum. And it, uh, it worked. The Bridges, right into the hands of Edwards. Can't foul him. Cam says, I won't foul. Generates another Minnesota turnover. That's great defense. And give Cam Johnson credit. Fires the triple. Oh. Brings the boom from Cam Johnson.
despite whatever happened and negotiations and all the rest. And it's that's the business of basketball. Right. But I know you love it here. Right. I know the system, the organization, and they want you. Right. How do you, how do you put that aside and just also feel positive about continuing here in Phoenix? You learn the NBA is really the first time where you're introduced to business alongside a sport. Everything was always academic alongside a sport, which is a lot different of a ball game than when you throw it into business alongside a sport. Um, and it's a whole different world and you don't really start to see what it entails until you get a little deeper into it, until a couple of things, you know, you see your teammates get waived, you see your teammates get traded, you see decisions that like send people that you become close to away. And you start to realize that the business side will always do what's in the best interest of the business side. So you as the player also have to do what's in the, and it's what keeps the system going. Like me making my business decision is a, a, a small cog in the big wheel of the NBA, you know, continuing to, to go along. But that aside, I love being in Phoenix. It city's been great to me. I love living here. And I think what we've been able to accomplish on the court was so special. So this is, this is definitely where I want to be. And, um, you know, I just, this has become like a, really a home to me. And I'm not even really worried about the future contract negotiations right now, just because we have such a cool opportunity. Like there's so many things that need to happen before we could even get to next July, right? Like there's a huge opportunity, possibilities, you know, are endless. Um, and that starts with an 82 game season and playoffs. And that's really what I'm ultra focused on right now. And just because like, why not? Like it's, it's, you know, what you ask for as a basketball player, what you ask for as a competitor is to be on a team, to have a starting role with a group of guys that you've been playing with for a long time with championship aspirations and realistic championship aspirations. And so just embracing that daily is really what I'm focused on now and just hoping and praying that the rest takes care of itself down the line. And you can't leave your twin. Can't leave no, anyone. right. That's my guy. Oh my God. Kelby. That's a, you just crumble. Right. That's my guy. And I just, you know, you, you just learn this. You like you grow to start love to compete alongside those guys. Like you're in the trenches with them. Your, your communication becomes at a higher level. And just knowing, you know, what, what your teammate is going to do. Like that's the, I mentioned this earlier, but that continuity piece to the guys we have is, you know, a lot of fun to be a part of because you can just, evolve the game to a higher level of thinking. I think that's why so many fans and broadcasters wanted to see this team run it back yeah. as closely as possible to right. the minute that we've been watching the last right. couple of years. But hopefully we get to have another one of these meals yeah. a year from now. Yeah. Maybe we'll have another dish named after you. But man, this has been fun. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. It. Thank you.